Dear friends in Christ, welcome. We come to you today from St. Michael and, Hol and All Angels Chapel here at Christ the King Center in Greenwich, New York. Throughout this time of crises and, and this, uh, as the coronavirus continues to wreak havoc amongst our parishes and our communities, uh, we, it's our hope and prayer to be able to join you each Sunday morning with a uh, service conducted here in the chapel and that, that hopefully you can be a part of in, in, uh, in your homes or wherever you might be. I know that many of your churches are doing similar broadcasts from their parishes and we give thanks to God for that and please tune in to them or to, to any others. Throughout this time, we're hoping to on the diocesan website to have a list of different uh, resources that, that you can tune into to assist in worship uh, there in your home uh, while we're unable to be together uh, in, in our home parishes. But anyway, this morning uh, we give thanks to God on this fourth Sunday in Lent, and we're going to begin our worship together with our music team that is being led by Father Nixon McMillan from St. Paul's in Albany and, and uh, Father Scott Evans from All Saints in Round Lake. So we give thanks to God this day.
Our service this morning continues with the penitential order right to found on page 351 in your prayer books bless the lord who forgives all our sins his mercy endures forever jesus said the first commandment is this hear o israel the lord our god is the only lord love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and grace and help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Our first reading this morning is from the first book of Samuel, 16th chapter, starting in the first verse. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. 
fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. He guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Father, pour out your Holy Spirit mightily upon your servant as he proclaims your gospel. Open the hearts and minds of your people, that we may hear and receive your word and your word only. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus saw a man blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents but that the works of God may be made manifest in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the life of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees again asked him, how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know. Do, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said to him, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have already told you, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is a marvel. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. 
Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born utterly in sin, and you would teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Albany, and uh, it is an honor to be able to, to preach the word today on this gospel. Jesus said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Don't we all wish that we could wash in the pool of Siloam? right about now. And yet, I think the message for today is that we already have. It is difficult not to see the baptismal imagery in John's telling of this miracle. It is left right and centered in our gospel. Jesus Christ is in our gospel. Even our epistle for today, the biblical scholars tell us, reflects an early baptismal hymn. Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. The early church often called baptism illumination. It is how, in the words of the epistle, we become children of light. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, says St. Paul. Light and darkness, blind and sighted, we can hardly miss the point. The gospel and the epistle proclaim it at every turn. We have been washed in the pool of Siloam, our own eyes opened in baptism. In the back of our church, St. Peter's in Albany, there's a memorial chapel. It's visited regularly by the downtown Albany community, especially at lunchtime. I often go back there at the close of the day and I find votive candles lit in good number. And it's powerful to see them. People want a visible sign of their prayer ascending to God. They want to add their own candle to the light our world so craves and needs and to seal their petition. Their candle takes its stand against the darkness. It is pure, that flame. How we hunger for purity, the purity of our baptism, the purity of the children of light. And John is saying to us, remember, remember how Jesus sent you to the pool of Siloam, how once you also were blind, and now you see. I don't know about you, but about this time, in times like these, I find that I need to be reminded of who I am, who I've been made, is baptized, marked as Christ's own forever, child of the one who is the light of the world. A little candle, maybe I am, but with the baptized throughout the world, a whole lot of light, a whole lot of votive candles a whole lot of little acts of Christian charity, a whole lot of valuing the dignity of every human being, a whole lot of prayers going up, a whole lot of hands reaching out to touch the fringe of Jesus' garment, simply because we have been washed in the pool of Siloam. And you know, it makes all the difference in the world. As I ponder with you the lessons for today, the question that comes 
to me, is the now of it. It takes the form of a simple question. What does it mean to be the baptized in the time of the coronavirus? The other day, a woman shared a story of being in the supermarket at the start of this thing. There was this mad throng of people scrambling for the last rolls of toilet paper. There were, she said, some very sharp elbows. It was a sad scene. This woman thought about getting into the mix, but as she looked on at the panicked faces of these folks, especially an older woman near her, she stopped. She said to herself, I'm a Christian. I'm going to let them have it. I see their panic, and I'm not going to add to it with my elbows. I mention this because baptismal identity is most often like that, isn't it? It is not us making the bold confession of faith before Caesar. It is making the small confession before the world most often, often without words, often in the toilet paper aisle. I know that you too have been doing such things, things like that woman did, because you've already been sent to the pool of Siloam. It's our little army of votive candles lit by him who sent us there. Baptism is a great mystery to be sure, but sometimes it's as simple as thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's toilet paper, thou shalt not Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother by calling thy agent parents regularly and seeing how they're doing. Thou shalt not steal by taking more than your share of scarce resources. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And thou shalt not ask, like the lawyer in the parable of the Good Samaritan, and who is my neighbor? At the poor pool of Siloam, everything changes. The blind receive their sight, and it's real, like that woman in the supermarket. One day when I was in seminary, I found myself in the basement of the library in an old stack of books. I wasn't looking for anything in particular. I was just roaming and taking a break from studying. My eye was caught by a collection of sermons by St. Augustine. I opened a volume up and found that he had preached a series of sermons on the Ten Commandments. It appears that things weren't going that well in the congregation, commandment-wise. I found myself riveted. It was Augustine as bishop and pastor speaking to his flock. His humanity shined forth at every page, and it was both tender and personal. But there was a particular passage that stuck with me by memory here. At one point in these discourses on the Ten Commandments, he stops, clearly exhausted. It's estimated that Augustine preached about 8,000 sermons in his long life. And he says to his flock, please, do as I say. The only pleasure I have in life is your good lives. The only pleasure I have in life is your good lives. One thing about St. Augustine is he put everything on the table and go straight for the heart. Why do I mention this? Whenever the Ten Commandments are read, as they are at the start of service, often in Lent, I'm reminded of St. Augustine's words. All the saints, the brightest of the army of votive candles, are just trying to encourage us to remember our baptism the gift of the pool of Siloam, who we are through the water of rebirth. And then, as St. Paul says to us today, to try and find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Right now, even now, in the very circumstances we find ourselves. Can we do so of ourselves in our own strength? Of course not. But we can cooperate with God's abundant grace and so let our little light shine in the grocery line, in our social isolation with our loved ones, in our respect for authority, 
in genuine kindness, in checking in on others and sharing what we have, to trust in the God who loves us. It's rare in our frantic world that we are put on pause. There is a gift in it to be opened. Baptism is a bit like that, a gift every, ever being opened, a light ever shining in new corners. Ah, oh, I was blind, but now I see it. Ah, oh, there's Jesus right there. The kingdom of God is breaking in in the toilet paper aisle. I won't belabor the point. St. Paul has said it perfectly. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and true and right. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. It's hard to imagine a more perfect baptismal instruction. Let me wrap up. On one occasion or so, uh, when I'm visiting older Episcopalians, I will find myself dipping into the 1928 prayer book. I pray the bishop is approving. I don't do it often, but occasionally as the need arises. The thing that strikes me every time I open the 28 prayer book is that it seems to speak into a world that seems to me to be drifting away, a world in which life is not as secure, a world in which we truly confront our mortality with urgency. In this time of pause, we can find ourselves thinking of life more deeply, more profoundly, more Christianly, and as a life finally and ultimately in God's hands, God's time, God's unfailing mercy and love and providence. Sometimes we have no choice but to surrender control. And most often, it is precisely when we do that we find both God and the peace of God. I pray that peace for us all. We know the Good Shepherd is already leading us through. One last little point, a small thing. As I was preparing for the sermon today, I was reading a scholar who spoke about the historical context of blindness in Jesus' time. As we heard in the Gospel, it was thought a judgment for sin. And as such, it was easy to dismiss those souls by the side of the road, ironically, not even to see them on the path. They simply didn't exist. But Jesus sees this man, and he teaches his disciples how to see this man. It seems to me especially important in this time as the baptized to really see others as fellow children of the Father, others for whom Christ died, to look them in the eye and acknowledge their humanity in the strongest sense, even if we have to pass the mandatory three to six feet on the street. Will you respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Baptism, it just keeps coming up. You and I will no doubt be seeing and blind blind and seeing again and again. But the light will prevail. Our baptism will win because of him who sent us to the pool of Siloam, the light of the world. He'll keep our candles lit. May the Lord bless and keep us. Give us the grace to do his will this day and forever. In the name of the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 358 in your prayer books, let us join together in professing our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form four found on page 388 of the prayer book. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit in this time of the coronavirus. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us, and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. That's peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was temp tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share with our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So our Lord and Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. I realize at this time we are scattered all over the diocese, not in our home parishes as we would like, but in our homes or wherever the Lord might lead us at that moment. I invite you at this time to receive the Lord into your heart and soul and mind, knowing that wherever you are, he is with you. He has not abandoned you. He loves you. He gives himself to you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let the king Oh, good. 
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.